All right, all right. Welcome back, everyone, to Futures Trading with Mike. I appreciate you tuning in today, watching this video, regardless of you know wherever you're at across the world. I am a um, supply and demand trader. If you are new, if you're new to the channel, so I look for setups surrounding supply and demand zones, and uh, I'm a scalper, so. Um, I don't put on trades and kind of ride them through. So I'm looking for, you know, setups throughout the market or uh, on my charts and, you know, execute a trade and look for the next setup. So I trade the E-mini S&P 500. That is my bread and butter uh, go-to market that I love to trade on a daily basis. Um, a lot of individuals within our Discord community, uh, members there, they also trade the MES. But it doesn't matter what particular future market that you actually trade. Um, you know, supply and demand is just to me it's just where it's at. You know, it's it's uh, the bread and bo bread and butter, the cornerstone to my actual trading. So uh, let's kind of dive into today's trading session again. This is going to be a live recorded session of me trading the E Mini S and P five hundred. So let's jump right into it. Watch the intro, and we'll be right back. Okay, so let's take a look at the higher time frame because I always like to kind of just peek inside to see what the higher time frame looks like. For me, it is a 60 range chart. Um, you know, doesn't matter if you trade a time based chart, it could be a 60 minute chart for you, um, or even higher time frame or a 30 minute chart. It doesn't really matter. But for me, I'm looking at I change I trade range charts specifically. I could trade time based charts as well, but I like to look at the uh the range charts. Uh just preference, you know, I like the way um to me, this looks cleaner to the eye. Uh, but anyways, uh, and taking a look here, we see that uh, the markets are making higher highs and higher lows up until just a few days ago. Uh, well, actually, just up until yesterday, pretty much, I mean, um, which was the 18th. And the market started breaking structure right here to the downside. So you can see we've been making higher highs and higher lows, finally get a break to the downside, breaking through some, some levels or some area structure back down to the downside. So to me, I, I would have a bias um, and to look for short entries on pullbacks to certain key zones. So at this point, it just really boils down to um, scaling down to a lower time frame chart and looking for areas of supply if you're going to trade your short entries. I'm not saying that you can't take any means of, of counter trend trades, but for those that are really sticklers for uh, looking for or following the direction and confluence off the higher time frame chart, it would be um, in best interest to trade looking for supply zones on pullbacks. I'm not saying that you may catch me find, catch me taking a trade off demand just as well today, but it just depends on what the market's throwing out there today. So, but yeah, I mean, looking at structure right now, price is breaking to the downside. I would be interested in looking for some areas of um, uh, pullbacks. So, uh, and actually, we are hitting off of an area of demand right now on the 60 range chart. You know, if you guys can't really see that, it is uh, in this zone right here, okay? Price broke up, pulled back, continued breaking uh, to the upside, took out structure right here, took out this high. There was liquidity resting right here. Um, so, yeah, uh, as well as this liquidity resting in the back end, too. So, when price broke back here, it took out liquidity resting at the high right here, continued breaking higher. Now, it's tapped back and testing this area of demand right here, but there is liquidity resting at the low right here. So, with that said, there could be possibilities to look for a long entry as well, being that we're testing off of a higher time frame area of demand. And uh, we're going to scale down, look at the 12 range chart now. So, uh, the market was a little volatile uh, a few moments ago. It kind of pushed the downside here. But, yeah, let's look to see. I mean, in all honesty, um, I'm trying to see if we have any area of demand off of the, uh, the, the 12 range chart now. So kind of trading sideways right now. We had this push up, pull back. So the market's kind of in a little wedge right here. Uh, this is my 12 range chart. This is the chart that I primarily trade off of. Um, so we'll wait and see. Now, let me see here. There is supply resting right here. The top's right here. So if price gets back into the zone. I may take a short entry or short trade if we get rejection. But um, yeah, I'm gonna take a look and see. Now, for me, it's all about taking trades off of high probability zones. So, 
you know, I don't just trade each and every supplier demand area or ones that, you know, uh, appear that it could be supplier demand. Um, I look for aggressive areas in the market uh, where there's a, uh, lots of selling or buying. In this case here, there's lots of selling coming out of this area here. So we have supply resting right here. Uh, price broke this area here, leaving a little gap right here to the downside, leaving a gap to the downside. Bunch of red candles, but we got a small gap from here to right here. That price hasn't filled this area back to it yet. So if we get a pullback to this area, um, I would possibly be interested in looking for uh, a trade entry. Uh, but if price breaks back above here, if I go short, I, I would probably, depending on price action, as it get when it gets back up to this area, uh, I'll be looking for maybe just a trade back down here to around maybe 21, 20 area, somewhere around there. Um, so we'll wait and see. Right now, it's just chopping sideways. Not much news today. Uh, actually, we do have um, FOMC member Bernard speaking at uh, Bernard Brainard speaking. I'm sorry at uh, a 1:15 this 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 afternoon. So and then Crudo is here coming up at 11 o'clock. So um, you know some some news there. But we'll see. Uh, price has not tapped right back into the zone 100%. So we're going to wait and see what it does. If it does tap back into it, we can see we get a little aggressive uh, buy-in, some buying coming out of this area here. So we'll see. Let's just wait and see. I'm looking for it to come back up to test around the 30 area, 30, 31 area, somewhere around there. Um, We'll see. <clears throat> so, it's rejecting this area. I'm not testing it quite yet, though, but price could pull back. That's the thing about price. It, it, it does what it's going to do. You know, it pushes up, pulls back, pushes up, pulls back. And you got to just be patient. A lot of people aren't patient. They like to jump in and out of trades and, you know, you got to wait for the setup. You got to wait and trade, you know, what you see. Now we know price can pull back to where it's at right now and it could then break higher or it could, you know, turn around and break lower. So, it's, you know, we'll see what happens here. Uh, we're in a wedge right now. So price, you know, made a high here, um, pull back, making a low right here. So kind of in a wedge right now. We do have this low sitting down here as well. So there's liquidity resting down here. Price order making runs to the downside. Broke higher, taking out structure. It could break lower and want to come in and take out this area of liquidity resting down here at 3907 area. So we'll just sit back and wait. Be patient. There's no rush in trading. Um, you know, especially when you're trading supply and demand. I, I scout these areas. You know, I'm not one to sit in a trade um for an entire session um so i'm just looking for incremental moves in the market and uh take what i can take and, and then wait for the next setup that's that's the key so i'm just waiting to see if price is going to maybe tap into this zone here but you know um we're making these little swings to the upside here making these little higher highs and higher lows but again like i said we have a run to the upside here price turned back around broke structure so um We'll see what happens here. Okay, let's see what price does here. It may try to break the downside here. Uh, this could be some rejection right here. Let's see what price does here. I'm not sure if it's going to reject this area, push through it. Looks like it's trying to push through it. All right, so now. Uh, I'd possibly maybe if we get a pull back to this zone right here um, I'm gonna mark this area here. It may not come back immediately to this area, but there is an area of supply resting right here Okay, let's tighten the zone up a little bit more Okay, so we'll see here uh, Price broke this low right here. There was liquidity resting right here at the low right here. So um, We'll see we're just ranging in this area right here. Price made a low here, pull back, break the structure, 
you could break lower, break into this area of liquidity where there's a uh, uh, area of structure right here, this low here. So this could be just a swing on a retracement up just to push lower and make a bigger swing to the downside. So um, be mindful of those, these, these type areas or these type setups, okay? Because a lot of people have a hard time uh, following market structure and being able to read it. Um, so and that's the key. That's the thing is about... You have to be get, become great at reading mark or following market structure. Looking at the market structure, I always call it the foundation, uh, to be able to to, to trade uh, price action correctly, accordingly. You know, um, so being able to, to to read the structure of the market, we you know what it's trying to do, and at any given point, it could always be doing something different. Like, you know, I, I said price pull back to this area right here. Maybe look for a short. Well, it didn't get there. You know, it. it Broke a little higher here, didn't tap into the zone here. Now it pushed lower, so you know it, it, it can. The market can always throw you a curveball and always do something different. It's just a matter of being able to read on your chart what price is doing. That's the biggest thing that a lot of people fail at doing. That is, they 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 have a hard time and they look at every little level in between, thinking it's an area of supply or demand, and that's what um, puts them in a bad position. I'm bad. Just be patient. Look for the right setups. You know. To me, I see price breaking this low right here now where liquidity rests at or where structure was. Um, so it broke structure to the downside right here coming down. On this pullback right here, this could be an area to go short from. Now, if if, if it pulls back to this zone right here, you may be asking, well, where are you taking the trade to? Well, take it back down to the lows to start with, okay? All right, why? Because uh, it's a new low. It's imprinted. So there's liquidity resting there. So you always got to understand that at every um, high or low in a situation, there's going to be, it's, when price moves away from a low right here, like it did here, it broke higher, there's liquidity resting here now because buyer stepped in the market, pushed the market higher, money rested right uh, sitting right here because there was money that was in, in, uh, injected into the market to push the market higher, okay? Just as now, if price breaks through this area right here, there's liquidity resting at this high right here, okay? So why? Because as sellers pushed the market lower, there was money that was injected injected into the market to make that move. You understand that? I hope hope everyone understands that concept. All right. Um, trading, you have to think more logical. Okay, here we go now. The market's a little volatile. So let's see what happens here. All right, we're tapping to the zone now. Will it break to the downside or will it continue pushing to the upside now? Okay, so let's see. Now, broke structure to the downside here. It can come up here and test this area here, and if it does, uh, it could be a little bit iffy situation. We'll see what happens if price just comes up to this area, or is it going to fold here and push down to the downside? And we'll take a look and see. Okay, looks like it's trying to trying to break higher at this, this this point right but let's see if it um what it fully does here is it going to close to the upside here if it does and this is a no-go if it takes out supply right here this is a no-go but we do have another area of supply sitting here, here at the tops so um just have to wait and see okay No go for me yet to take a short, but if it breaks here, I will be interested in entertaining and taking a short here. <clears throat> Let's see what happens here. Okay, I'm short. Okay. So, I'm looking for the market to run lower. Now, at this point here, let's see what happens. Hopefully, we get filled here. OK, 
Come on. So this is what I don't like to see. I'll, I'll talk about this in a video that's kind of teetering back and forth. But you got to be patient and, and stay in the trade and let, let the trade play out. I always say that. So my first contract is here at 20 and a quarter, I guess. So I'm going to bring it up one tick there. Come on, baby. So I may take a screenshot here and throw this out on Discord so our community members can see this trade. Hopefully it works out for us. Uh, a tick or two away from hitting the TP here. It's pulling back on me now. I'll just you know, kind of pushing and pulling, tugging right here. I don't like that. I like to see market go ahead and make its move. So we'll see when it hits my first t a profit target, what I'll do here. Um, so if we can get filled here. I'll put a hard stop if it gets. I'll put a stop here. If we get filled here on the first contract, come on, baby. Look at it. There we go. We got filled there on the first contract. So I'm going to drag this right here. A few ticks. Just trying to show you how I, you know how you can trade with a stop loss. I think I'm going to put this right here, this contract here, uh, being we have a high volume node here. And it's balanced off this high volume node here. So it can pull back before pushing lower here. But I just want to show you guys. In a situation of a trade like this, what could possibly happen? We could pull back all the way up here, you know? But that's fine. If it if it stops me out, then it stops me out. Um, I'll still be in, you know, look at it. Probably going to stop me out. But for me, typically what I would do is put my stop loss at the back end of this area of supply right here. Um, or... You can put it right here in the back end of this candle right here. So if it breaks through the area of supply, I'm out. Now I could pull back here and I might go ahead and take profit. You know, you may be saying, well, why aren't you taking profit yet? I'll just push it and pull them back and forth tugging. So I might just go ahead and take profit here and be done with this trade. But let's see. You know what? I'm going to let it play out. You see it? This is what I don't like to see. Not closing quick enough to the downside. So I'm going to go ahead and take profit, all right, just to be on the safe side. And it probably keep running to the, down to the downside, right? All right, so that's the first little trade. And this is the trade setup. These are the kind of trade setups that you want to look for when trading. This is a good setup. Uh, I think I put my original second contract around the 16 area. So it may come down there. It may it's probably it may try to take out this low right here, being we got a um, nice setup here on an area of supply. Broke this area structure, took out liquidity on the pullback right here uh, to this area supply. It may come down here and make a new low. Now, it, it could get down here where the low is at right here. What I'm saying is it could take out this low, but it can get down here where it's at now and um, bounce. Okay. It can bounce in this area and then, you know, decide what it's going to do. But um, to me, it looks like it wants to continue maybe possibly running to the downside, at least taking out this, this area here. But, you know, we will uh, definitely see what happens here. Okay. So once you're into a trade and your first contract's gotten filled for say for instance, and then you want to like set up a, a you know a stop market or um a when you stop loss down a few ticks below in this case here because we're going short below the um break even point um where you got to the trade at, then you know you're you're locked in, you're solid, um, and you don't have anything to lose. Now I have my, my first con my second excuse me, my second contract out resting there at 16 but 
as you saw, I went ahead and took profit, I think, like around three points on both contracts. Because, you know, you see this right here. What is it doing now? Now it's going to start to move around this area here, probably because that's where the VPOC is at. And look at it. There it is, around the VPOC. So situations like that, especially if you're a new trader or beginner trader, and you get to the point where you enter a trade, trades in your position, and it hits the, the VPOC, you may want to go ahead and take profit because of the fact is it is in an area where it can start moving sideways. Okay? And there you have it. That's that that uh, second contract. If I left my my uh, contract there, I would have got a field right there, right? See, so it hit hit it to the tick, and it could continue pushing lower. But again, uh, be careful here because we are at an area at a low where price could bounce it. But to me, it looks like it may want to try to may try to push a little lower here. But but be careful because we are around the POC just as well. So nice setup on a good supply area. Uh, now you know pay attention as well because we do have. The price made this low here, it turned back around, broke structure to the upside, and it could just want to push back lower, taking out this low right here, which then we got a nice swing back, uh, um, excuse me, uh, a nice uh, push to the downside here, and, and it could be possibly look for an area on a pullback to go short as well out of this big swing here to the downside. So just be, be mindful, that's all I'm saying. Okay, let me delete that. Okay. All right. So again, this was price pushed up, pushed lower, turn back around, breaking structure to the upside, then leaving leaving behind an area of liquidity. So when price broke higher here, okay, making this low, and then it broke structure. It, 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 there's liquidity rest right here. I explained that just a minute ago or a couple minutes ago early in the video. Comes back down, takes out this area here, leaving supply sitting up here. You got to see it. You just got to be able to read price action and follow it as it's doing its thing trade setup right here you know looks like this price run to the downside breaks higher okay all right taking out this area right here on the pullback okay taking out structure right here then it runs back down lower leaving behind what do you have supply resting right here as I mentioned, it took out liquidity rest right here. So when it pulled back right here, broke the structure right here, turned back around to break structure back down to the downside, making a new low, taking out structure here, and left supply sitting right here. Okay. So um, let's see here. So if it turns back around, say for instance, and takes out. Now, what you have right here, we have liquidity resting right here, liquidity resting right here. So price turns back around and pushes higher. What does it do? It's going to take out liquidity right here, right? Okay. And if it does do that, you look for a pullback to an area of demand below. Okay. You just got to follow that market structure. You got to follow price action. Be able to read market structure and follow price action. Okay. Okay. Again, okay. We took out this low right here now, right? All right. Liquidity was taken out. All right, so what could happen now? Now we got a new low here, but price could turn back around, swing back up to the upside now, take out, taking out this area, these highs right here, uh, this area where liquidity rests at. And so we could do something like this now. I'll show you. We could break higher just to pull back to test some area of demand once it's created, you know, down here below uh, in the market run back to the upside. Okay, so we'll see what happens, but it may, it may fold back down to the downside here, taking out this low right here. So if it does this, takes out liquidity, okay, then we can look for an area to put on a pullback to go uh, for demand, right? A demand setup. Now, if it breaks lower, all right, let's say it breaks lower. It's going to show that, show you that, show you this. Uh, let's say it breaks, continues breaking lower, right? Taking out this area right here. What are we going to do then? So if it breaks lower, okay. Then we can look for a pullback to some area of supply. Okay, so you just got to follow price action and always, always, always keep in mind the uh, um, structure of the market. What's being taking taking place here right now? We're moving sideways. We got a high here. There is a, a a low a low resting right here, and there's liquidity resting right here. So the market can come down and try to test this area here. Um, but you know, you just got to be be mindful and be careful. Um, and, and just wait it out. Okay, now this was a great run here on this pullback to push lower, but it is tapping into, um, you know, support down here at the bottom to where it could push higher. So 
we'll, we'll just see. Right now, we're just kind of moving sideways, chopping around, even though we're making these lower lows and lower highs now. But we are uh, trailing sideways right now. All right. So let's see what price is going to do here. I'm not 100% sure. It does look like it's trying to make a run to the downside here. Uh, maybe break this area structure. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Yeah, we'll wait and see what happens here. Yeah, it does appear that we're trying to maybe break lower now. So uh, what I was discussing earlier about breaking this area or this low down here, um, where liquidity is at, we break that and take that out, then, um, you know, we can look for, you know, an area for the market to pull back to an area. I'm, what I'm trying to say is an area supply. Okay. So, um, and that could be really any given area. I mean, it could be, uh, price breaks this area here, pulls back right here, or it could pull back right here to this area here. So we'll, we'll wait and see. All right, so now we, we've broken this low here, okay, with this red candle to the downside. So, I mean, we can get a pullback to this, above this high volume area here, and get a break back down to the downside, taking this area here. Or we could, you know, um, just as well uh, pull back to this area up here, which is, I think, 39.17 is the VPOC. Yeah, so be careful about that area there if, you, if price pulls back to that zone. Um... So yeah, let's wait and see here. And again, if you pay attention to you know the structure of the market on the higher time frame, we are hitting this demand zone, this big area of support sitting down here, um, which was demand earlier. Um, a price bounced off of it early part of this morning around nine o'clock, but uh, we're testing that area again. So you know, price is going to struggle to try to break through this area because you know there's a lot of um, trading transactions or activity that happen in this area to push the market up to the upside okay uh, a lot of you know orders were filled right here but anyways the market could run and push lower so we'll wait and see what happens because uh you know I, I on the higher time frame you can see that we broke major areas of structure to the downside so the market can can continue pushing lower and it looks like it's trying to do so on the higher time frame we had a push down pull back price broke lower here Played around here. Now it's like it's trying to push lower or even lower. So we'll see. But it's going to struggle in this area. Definitely so. Now I'm loving what I see here. And I'm just going to mark a zone where price could possibly pull back to. It can pull back here. It can pull back here. Um, either one of these would be okay. But this is, I believe, the uh, VPOC right here around 17. So be careful. Above the high volume area, like I say, and trading with. Or, um, with confirmation of the, of the volume profile, including that, I incorporate that into my trading. You know, I like to take my trades from from going short from the upper end of a high volume area where where volume starts to thin out a little bit. And uh, I get questions from time to time about the red and green bars to the right hand side of the volume profile here. That's Kim Delta at uh, traded at price pretty much. And um, I will be doing a video more so. I'll, I'll be doing a video kind of covering that. Because people ask me, or traders ask me, do I incorporate that into my trading? I do. I do uh, uh, incorporate it into my trading to some degree. Um, it is important, Cum Delta, I, I believe. Um, and Delta is down here at the bottom, but this is more of a histogram um, representation of it. Uh, you know, a histogram representation of it when looking at volume overall. Okay, so. We'll take a look at that, or I'll discuss that in a, in, in a next video or so, uh, how you can include that or incorporate that into your trading. You know, so prices at an area of supply, what could you be looking for when it comes to not only the volume profile, but the delta histogram. Okay, so we see price pulling back right now. And uh, we'll see what happens. It's hitting um, resistance right now. All right, so we tap back into the zone here. I would like to see it maybe push a little bit higher above the high volume area here, but it could reject here, and and then it could possibly push higher. So, you know, we'll see. We will see. All 
I'm interested in seeing what price is going to do right here. We do have the lows right below us, so. Not sure. Just waiting patiently. Let's see if we get the close below or if it's going to break higher. But overall, the market really hasn't done too, too much other than make this uh, retracement and then swing to the downside, breaking this area structure right here. So, just waiting it out, waiting it out. Let's see, let's see. Okay. Now we break above the zone here, then it makes it invalid. So far we haven't done that. All right, I'm short. Okay, and I'm looking for price to maybe come back down towards the lows. We'll see what happens here. I'm gonna try to take a screenshot of this. Okay, screenshot taken. I'm gonna include that on Discord. Come on baby, fill my, fill my last contract. Oh, look at it, hit my TP. One tick away. I'm going to go ahead and take out right here. If we get filled here. Ah. Oh, no. Okay, there we go. It's probably going to break this low right here. But this is a pullback to an area of supply. Okay. And I'm going to throw that out there on Discord. Okay. Let's see. Uh, was six. Yeah, I threw that out there on Discord. Okay. I went ahead and I moved that last contract because I saw, you know, the market um, uh, pulling back right here. Uh, pulling back, you know, this big green candle right here. So it came down here and tested low, um, you know, on this pullback right here. So it could continue running down, taking out this low. So we'll see. So again, I mentioned earlier, you know, price retraced back here, broke structure here, liquidity resting right here. I said if it breaks down, just making a big swing to the downside right here, taking out this area of liquidity, you look for a pullback. I'll go ahead and, and mark up an area of supply, wait for the rejection, and take your shot short. Okay. Now it could have pulled here or retrace here, as well as retrace back here, but it pulled here, rejected this area here with this high volume area is, and uh, you take your shot short, <clears throat> at least coming back down to the lows. But um, you know, you know that the price could actually um take out the low right here as well. So it's moving sideways. And this is what I was talking about. I talked about this in several videos. When the market starts chopping like this to the side, I go ahead and typically get out. You know, if I'm into a trade and it, it's not moving quick enough uh, to uh, take out my, my you know, my prop, my TPs, my, hit my uh, target profit areas, then I go ahead and, and take what I can get and get out. See how it's running back to the upside here. Now I can come back up here to the upside of here and test this area of this zone here as well. But we have the VP, I mean, excuse me, the POC right there is uh, right now. All right, so here we go now. Price running back to the uh, upside. It's tapping into the supply zone. We see it here. Um, I believe we do have the uh, POC in near sight right here at 17. So uh, I'll be a little iffy in taking this trade here. For you know, to me, I think I'm gonna stand down. Not to say it will it won't reject, but even if it does reject, be mindful because we just broke structure back here to the upside. You know, broke back in, you took out this area right here. So price rejects this area. It could just stop right here, to be honest with you. So be very, very careful. Okay, so we broke this area here, uh, right above the, the VPOC. So I'm just going to be careful. I'm going I'm to stand down. I'm not going to trade this zone here at all. Um, 
So actually, I'm going to go ahead and take that zone there off because it's invalid now. But this was a good zone right here. But you had the low right here, so be careful. All right, so be careful now trying to take any, you know, trades short, being the fact that we're breaking, you know, structure back to the upside of breaking, taking out key areas of uh, support. I'm mean, assuming resistance or, or levels, I should say, uh, back to the upside here. See, as prices swing to the downside here, making lower lows and lower highs, it turned back around. It's taking some areas out now back to the upside. So uh, be careful, um, you know, as we speak right now, there is you know uh, a low right here there's liquidity resting right here and price could be aiming for this area now on a, a pullback here but be careful because there's support sitting sitting right here okay uh, could it come down to this area here in the zone here and reject it yeah price could pull back to this area right here um, there is demand resting right here and uh reject okay so it hasn't pulled back to it yet see um yeah, price coming back to the zone right here. I say around, I say around a nine area, thirty nine on nine. It could reject it, uh, this area, and then you're looking to take price back up to, um, you know, just this, this this area here, this high here, where pretty much the VPOC is resting at. So, just be careful. But I'm gonna go ahead and close the video out here. Hopefully, this video, you guys found this video helpful. Hopefully, it gave you some explanation. Hopefully, it gave you some insight. And best of all, I truly hope you found some value in the video. Guys, if you found value in today's video, please do me an extreme favor, a very important favor. Drop a like on the video. Look, all you have to do is take your, 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 your finger, your hand, click on the like button. Drop me a like, guys, if you found some value in this content today. I truly appreciate all the supporters and everyone who is tuned into the videos each and every day. I truly appreciate all the subscribers here on the channel. If you are new to the channel, if you are new to the channel and you're interested in grasping, understanding how to trade, you know, future, the future, future markets, you know, I do have a strategy that I go in depth and in detail and discussing here on the channel. Um, and it's primarily for, you know, for new beginners, new traders using pair charts together, uh, which will basically um, aid you in um, or help you in, you know, uh, become profitable, you know, and, and, and I explain in detail, in great detail here on the channel uh, about the setup and how it actually works and incorporating supply and demand into the strategy. So if you're interested, I mean, you know, would love to have you here on the channel as a, a subscriber. Please make sure to subscribe down below. Click on the red button that says subscribe. Click on the bell to make sure you turn all your post notifications on so you never miss one of the uploads here on the channel. If you're interested in join, uh, joining our growing group of um, Discord members, community members, come over and join us on our Discord server. Uh, it's right here. I'll show it to you. Um, right now, I'm in the middle of discussing and sharing trade entries and screenshots as well as other traders here on the trading floor. The trading floor is where we discuss um, trading levels and share screenshots of our trade entries and things of that nature. And then you also have the general chat channel on the server to where we to where traders come across and discuss and converse with other traders about the future markets this channel is centered around futures trading so if you're interested in joining please find the link down in the description portion of the video or on any video okay again click on the link down in the description description portion of the video and uh, invite yourself in free of charge now if you also want to uh, get a broader understanding of uh, the trade breakdowns, meaning my breakdowns of, of where I go into detail about my trade entries. There are two tiers set up through the YouTube membership program for the price of a cup of coffee monthly. We're talking $6.99 a month. Most, uh, all those who have signed up have signed up as the one of the, or uh, have become an elite channel member. And what that gives you, each tier, you know, you can sign up for the loyal channel supporter tier or the elite member tier, which most people have signed up for. Because they receive the uh, additional perks of like the the trade breakdowns, the video playlist, which is hand selected by myself, um, to where I uh, kind of put together a playlist of videos, which will will um, kind of give you turnkey access to the videos that are the most important that I feel like will uh, provide an individual who's especially new uh, and understanding about the markets. Uh, that's me, uh, about the way I trade, I, sh I shouldn't say about the markets, but the way I trade, the strategy that I, I use to trade and um, and how it works, okay? 
but as well as giving you loads of information that you could find valuable and aid you in your own trading. As well as you get, like I said, the playlist, the trade breakdowns, uh, I do member shout out. So, you know, if you're interested in joining for the price of a cup of, cup of coffee a month, it's like $6.99 a month, whatever the case is. It's just a way to give back to a content creator like myself and supporting the channel. So I appreciate everyone who's tuned in. Thank you. Please make sure to drop a like on the video, guys, before I head out. And if you're trading, please be safe. Make sure to have a green day, okay? We are green days here on this channel, okay? We have green days. Uh, red days, uh, that's a no-no. But I understand if you're someone that's starting out, maybe you're sim or demo trading, you're kind of working out the kinks, you know, we you, you you will get there. It just takes time, okay? But here on this channel, we like to see green each and every day. And it is definitely, definitely, um, you know, possible. It is definitely possible. You know, I do it each and every day. Not to say that you won't take a bad trade. But the thing about taking bad trades is it shouldn't be bad to where you're taking on one major drawdown. Get out the trade early. Minimize your trades. That's all uh, it, it comes together when we talk about risk management. Minimize your risk. Protect your capital. All right. I'll leave you with that. Thank you, guys. And I'll see you in the next one.